I'm Rong Li Liao, BCBS Council Chair. With me is Vice Chair Joseph Wu from Stanford University. Today our guest is Dr. Brian Kobelka from Stanford University. Dr. Kobelka is the Nobel Laureate 2012 in Chemistry. And we are very honored Dr. Kobelka just delivered our keynote speech this year. So Brian, thank you very much for agreeing and give wonderful uh, keynote lecture this year. So Brian, I was wondering, could you tell us a little bit about the work lead to the Nobel Prize? For the past uh, 25 years or so, since I joined the faculty at Stanford, I've been interested in understanding how uh, G-protein coupled receptors work. So G-protein coupled receptors are a very large family of membrane proteins that are responsible for uh, cellular responses to most hormones and neurotransmitters, and, uh, and that's been the focus of my research. So what's this Nobel work and to now your current work and what you just presented to us in the keynote lectures? So the, the, I, I believe that uh, the, the work that, uh, for which I was awarded the Nobel Prize was really trying to understand the structural basis for receptor activation using protein crystallography. And uh, we're now really going beyond that to um, try to use this kind of information for, uh, to fil facilitate drug discovery, as I talked about, uh, and also applying other techniques to try to better understand how these proteins work in, in, um, in real time. So Brian, we have a lot of uh, junior investigators uh, listening to the video, watching, and also watch to your uh, speech. Could you give the junior investigators some, I guess, inspirational remarks in terms of uh, staying in science and uh, what are the future opportunities available in science? Well, uh, this is a tough question because uh, I believe that when I um, started my lab, uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was actually a very good time in terms of, of uh, funding and, um, and opportunities to develop new research programs. Uh, I think um, perhaps uh, current trainees are a little bit nervous about uh, starting their own research programs when they see the challenges that investigators are having uh, funding their research now. but uh, but. Even with the challenges of, of obtaining funding, it's a fantastic career. Uh, it allows you to, um, to uh, always sort of work in an area where uh, you're discovering new things. Uh, you're working with, particularly for someone my age, I'm working with very talented young people. And uh, it's, you know, in spite of challenges and funding, it's a, it's a fantastic career. And, and Brian, uh, you talk about the drug discovery uh, aspect for your research. Uh, could you give the audience maybe a perspective of what um, the GPCR and drug res uh, discovery research is going to be for the next five to ten years? Yes, yeah, so uh, it, it was in early 1990s that we discovered that GPCRs were this very large family of, of proteins. And, and there was a lot of hope that um, having access to the genes for these receptors would allow us to develop new, more effective drugs. But there have been a lot of challenges, uh, and the, you know, the hope that we would have a number of new potent drugs, effective drugs, uh, hasn't really materialized. And I think um, now that we learned more about the structure and, and complexity of signaling of these proteins, uh, we have a, a chance to go back and try to, with a better understanding of how they work, uh, to develop new drugs using uh, both our insights from um, their, that are complex signaling behaviors as well as structural uh, information to develop safer, more effective drugs that are more selective for specific receptor subtypes. So thank you. So Brian, you have been clearly very successful in this field. And so if you would go back again, what you would do and also what you would have advice for the young people, uh, you being trained as a, in a medical school, as a medical physician, but you embark on very, very basic fundamental structure biology and basic science. And what you see these two disciplines uh, come together and what you have to advise for the young people. Yeah, so I started my training 
uh, as a physician, and I think that even when I was training as a physician, I was interested in research, but I had fr fully intended to, to, you know, to have a career as a, a, a clinician. Uh, I've been fortunate that um, I've had the opportunity to change directions and do what I thought was the most interesting thing, um, and that's partly due, I would say, uh, to the fact that my my wife was very supportive uh, and allowed me to, you know, do what she thought I was really interested in, rather than, of course, uh, you know, making um, uh, much more money as a as a cardiologist. Uh, but uh, sort of, you know, I've always just been able to follow my heart more or less. That's good. Okay, so Brian, can you talk about how your research applies to the mission of the American Heart uh, Association? Sure. Uh, uh, G protein coupled receptors are involved in virtually every aspect of cardi cardiovascular function, from um, regulation of the heart rate to contract and contractility to um, to, to uh, remodeling, uh, to blood pressure, and uh, clotting. Uh, you name it. It's uh, there. I can think of uh, roughly 20 or even more G protein coupled receptors that are drug targets for various cardiovascular types of cardiovascular disease. So, so, Brian, uh, again, we have a lot of uh, young investigators uh, listening to this uh, video. Can you talk about an aha moment uh, during your research that led to the Nobel Prize? Uh, probably the closest thing I have to an aha moment would be uh, when we obtained the diffraction data for a receptor in complex with its G protein. This is in 2011. And, uh, and my students and postdocs were uh, beginning to use the diffraction data to, to actually solve and determine the structure and to begin to see how the receptor engaged with the G protein was really, was, was probably one of the most exciting uh, uh, experiences for me and, and, and also working with my students and postdocs. So the last question, what do you have the advice for the graduate students, postdocs, and the investigator just started their career? I think uh, probably what every successful scientist would tell you is that you should uh, do what interests you most. It's, it's a, as I said, it's, it's a difficult career in the sense that it's, it's a lot of hard work. Um, you have to keep your lab funded. And if you're not really interested in what you're doing, it's very hard to do it well. So with that, we want to thank uh, Dr. Brian Kabilga for uh, being here at the 2016 BCVS uh, meeting in Phoenix. We look forward to seeing all of you at the 2017 meeting in uh, Portland, Oregon. Thank you very much again.